playbook. I'm Mr. Long Short. Steve from My Bargain Comics. Carter, all yours. Hey, it's your main man, Mercy Knight, coming at you. What's going on, Rich Taylor, Dollar Bin? Please check out my um, new subreddit. It's on Reddit. I know a lot of people aren't, you know, familiar. It's under uh, New Comic Book Day Spec, all one word. And feel free to post something there or reply, what have you. Go ahead, Aaron. And I'm Aaron from Comic Book Food Chain. And I want to give a big shout out to Mighty Mel V for being the first person to put me on the podcast. So without him, I wouldn't be here. All right, where, where is Mel tonight? What the hell is his excuse? Where is he? All right, he, he's watching the UFC fight. I already tried getting him on. We're just going to talk about a handful of books tonight that we all like. Um, you know, one of the one of the characters that's been sort of front and center in my mind for a while, um, um, but I think the, her potential is huge um, over the next um, six to nine months is Kate Bishop. Um, you know, Haley Steinfeld posted some new pictures this week. Um, uh, of her in character, and they look phenomenal. And I think there's a good chance that she's amongst Marvel's very best casting for any character. And, uh, you know, I think her books right now um, are being slept on a little bit. Um, so I'm going to talk through a couple of them. You guys feel free to chime in. So we all know her first appearance was in Young Avengers number one, right? Um, this here is the direct uh, the director's cut. Um so why do I like this book? Well, you know, Kate's first appearances are fairly heavily ordered. Young Avengers was a heavily ordered book almost all the way through, uh, you know, with the first print being over 100,000. Uh, that director's cut that I just showed um, came out a month later um, with orders um, in the 18,000 range. Um, so if you're looking to track down an early Kate Bishop appearance that's relatively scarce, uh, I think that's one of the books you want to focus on. Raws are probably going right now for, you know, 85 to 100. Um, you know, my guess is that's going to look pretty cheap. Um, Kate Bishop is not a one and done character. She's going to be hanging around MCU for for a decade plus. So, um, and, you know, she'll be cemented in sort of pop culture history once, once she hits the screen. Um, I don't know if you guys sort of, Feel the same way about that, but you know, I, I think that's a, a a pretty a pretty solid play. I love I love the Kate Bishop, um, Kylie Steinfeld um, casting. I I was so worried that uh, Super Bowl um, KC versus San Francisco, so what a year and a month ago, or whatever, when that whole thing fell apart. I was so worried about her not being casted. I was actually really bummed out about that. But once it was confirmed, and now we've seen uh, pictures of her, what have you, I'm happy. Um, and to add on to what you're saying about Kate Bishop, and me and Longshore have talked about this multiple times, is you know, in Young Avengers one, which is her first appearance, and and I'm not downgrading that book at all. I actually own a couple copies of that book, and I'm very proud of those books. But um, you know, her her first appearance in there, she's like. I think she's like in a in, in, in uh, a wedding attire or what have you. I mean, she wasn't getting married, but she was like one of the one of the uh, people at the wedding and is getting the ball. I mean, she's not even really considered uh, uh, Hawkeye really until until number six, which Young Avengers six book is 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 on is on a trajectory, but is in my mind is absolutely positively undervalued and should be the book. A lot of people are targeting for not only Kate, but also for uh, um, Stature, for Cassie Land. I mean, what, yeah. what do you got? No, I, I think that's right. Um, so she really sort of takes over the Hawkeye costume, if you will, in that issue. Um, it's also her, her, her really her first cover appearance. Her face appeared sort of off to the side an issue before that but for her sort of first full cover appearance it's that avengers uh young avengers number six um she also takes on the hawkeye persona even though she doesn't actually get dubbed hawkeye till later on um i think that six is a pretty good play um but even that book right so as we think about kate bishop and I'm not downplaying that because I think that's a very smart play. But even that book is and was pretty heavily ordered. I think Young Avengers was still getting orders in the sixty to seventy thousand 
um, range at that point. And there's no second printings. There's no newsstand. I mean, the only way to play that book is the direct edition, um, mm -hmm. um, which is not to that knock it, but just to recognize that it's fairly common by modern standards. Um, um, important, absolutely. Undervalued, no question. Um, but are we going to see this absolute rocket ship? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but if you, but if you like uh, Kate Bishop, you better have a couple of copies of those books. Hey, uh, um, uh, that director's cut right now. It's a uh, easy, easy hundred dollars raw. Um, what do you see as far as potential for the future? Oh, that book, Carter. Is that, is, okay, is a hundred dollars a bargain right now? Yeah, I think you're gonna look back on that book. That book, right? And let's let's put Kate Bishop aside. Look back on that book um, as a bargain because, um, by all accounts, Eli Brady, Patriot, is showing up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, right? Um, Hulkling is rumored to be showing up soon. Speed Wiccan. I mean that 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 book. It, Young Avengers are coming, right? I mean, listen, WandaVision has told us Young Avengers are headed our way. Um, that book is going to look cheap, I think, at a hundred bucks um, in a year or so. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and with, with and with Kang coming, you know, um, and Iron Lad being in that book, and the you know everything that's connected. That, I mean, that adds to it. And plus, I mean, the book to own for Young Avengers one. I mean. In my opinion, is the um, is the Wizard World, right? The Wizard World uh, LA exclusive. Um, I, it's like a full blown sketch. What I like about the director's cut is a, it's under nineteen thousand orders. I think it's like eighteen five or something like that. And then plus, on top of that, the cover is sick. I mean, you have the you know half color and then goes fades away to the sketch. I mean, I like like I said. I think people should make the move and make it soon because eventually that book's going to be pegged and boom. Yeah, there it is. I mean, the 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 the, uh, the Wizard World book is sort of out of reach, I think, for a lot of people. Um, if you see it at an attractive price, sort of sub five hundred, grab it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think um, you know the, the average collector is going to be able to access that book. Uh, the director's cut seems to be. In my opinion, the best play um, if you're looking to spec on on Young Avengers, um, but you know, sticking with Kate Bishop, right? Because that that was sort of the, the the whole point of this was, you know, that she's got a, a handful of other really cool appearances that I think people should grab. You know, people know I like the hip hop covers, right? We, I used to, I talked about the Spider Man one way back when. I, I love this book, um, um, not because not only because it's Kate Bishop, but you know. Anybody who knows me knows I like, you know, covers with characters listening to music. So that ticks the bill here. Uh, but a really sort of stunning uh, Kate Bishop. This is her first solo series. Um, so uh, big, big fan of this one. Um, you know, there's a number of other. There's a one in, um, there's a one in 50 um, AHA variant that I think people should consider. Um, these are some of Kate's, some of Kate's, um, you know more rare appearances um but and i think all of these are going to be hot i mean this is this right here is super underrated i think you can find this if you look for 30 to 40 bucks this is a one in 25 um a nice a nice book in its own right what uh, number is that what's that what number is that it's number one number one oh, one in 25. Never so seen one it before. 25. Um, I, I think these are on eBay right now for 35 bucks, um, um, which I think is a steal to be perfectly honest, but, um, you know, another book that I would be grabbing of hers, um, got a couple of other, I'm going to, I'm going to show my favorite one in a sec, in a second here. This, this one's not a mystery. We've talked about it before. Um, I don't know if everybody feels the same way, but I, I think in my opinion, this is a, top 10 modern covered um comic cover right so this is the second print in purple um i i this is a good as good as it gets for me it's very subtle it's very understated um but i think this this cover is an absolute home run in my opinion as soon as you said top 10 modern cover i laughed because i know how much you love that book 
Yeah, um, I really do. And then, listen, this may be just per personal preference, but there's something about this cover that is so simple and elegant. I just can't. I, you know, it's hard to articulate. In the and I have a couple of the red covers as well. The first prints, it doesn't work as well as the purple for me. Still great in its own right. If you find that one, by all means, grab it, please. Um, but there's something about this this, this, this book that um, that really resonates. I have with to me. say, it, it's grown on it, it's grown on me over over time. Um, I, I originally was on board. I remember the first time you showed that, and I I was asking for a deeper meaning as to what the T-shirt meant and um you know does it say you know doesn't mean she she loves uh clint barton you know or do, you know she just is a big fan of herself um you know and i think that was my way of trying to uh uh just be funny but also like you know i'm like eh, i'm not sure how i feel but i think the book's growing on me yeah it's it's an, i don't know for me it speaks to me um you know, not to say that it's for everyone, but when I see that book, you know, I'm glad I own one. I'm glad because it, it's you know the, those purple ones, um, those second prints are are difficult to track down. Carter, you you must have one, right, man? You must. Have oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I remember about a year ago, um, I noticed that that book was going about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, that book was going for twenty bucks, and I made it my mission to find it. I found a copy with. Like a wa big water stain uh, in in the corner, and then I managed to find a really pristine copy, uh, like about God, about a year ago. So that yeah, that book is written. Have not found any any more since. So yeah, that book is real tough to find, and it's a great cover too. And I, like all of those purple subsequent prints. Are good ones to have, but y y when you think about um, number nine, and I believe it's number eight, I, the one where the woman in the dress, it was it's oh, like yeah, that's, that's eight, I think. Yeah, yeah, that one, that's a standout. And then you have uh, the pizza dog one. I forget what issue that is, but it, but the, eight, no, yeah, number one. that's number one, one. or one in eleven. Okay. Yeah, and then and then and then uh, number two, what we talked about uh, earlier. So it's a we have quite a few of those prints that are you know like those all purple prints that are just knockouts. Yeah, the purple the purple really works, right? Mm -hmm. I, ironically, right, the first prints are all red for the most part, right? Right. And uh, you know the purple just that being Hawkeye's color, yeah. Kate's and Clint's, right? It just it just really. I don't know, sets them apart. And they were relatively under order. When I say relatively, like wildly, you know, in the thousands. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, so the then if as part of the marketing, they, 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 they actually put that on a t-shirt, will you wear it? Yeah, I, I will wear it. I've also joked that I, I think that image will be used to market that TV show in some way. Right. So I'm on the record that. with that. I definitely see that. All kidding uh, aside. I yeah. don't know, but it just feels like that that, that that image is becoming so iconic that it's going to be used to market that show. Uh, just uh, to and, add, uh, I, let me add real quick, Aaron. Sorry, brother. Yeah, um, no worries. Let me let me add this. It, 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 he's just not talking about a cover, too. I mean, that book also in the guts has a, a really good key. I mean, it's the first appearance of the clown. Oh, right, uh, right. Uh, uh, I think his name is Tazi something. I can't remember, but uh, it's... Uh, the market's considering it uh, the book um, for that character. There's also the first full appearance, which is number 10 of that character. But even though nine is the book, it is the book. That's the cover to get. And with the Lucky the Pizza Dog, you are onto something, Aaron. Number one is the first appearance, but number 11 is the first solo story of the of the Lucky. Yeah, and that, that, that story is awesome. It's told from Lucky's perspective, right? There's right. really no dialogue in it, right? It's really told from the perspective of a dog, which in and of itself is is is, is a unique um, storytelling. But if you haven't read Mad Fraction's Hawkeye run, it is a top ten run of modern comics, in my opinion. I mean, really, really outstanding. Something everybody should read if they get the chance. You would you will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I was just gonna add it on real quick that like I, I definitely love all those later printings for that series, like. Because they definitely utilize all the purples, like to add to the art cover, and then like just because like 
when you see the first printing of the red, like it's kind of it doesn't go with what you expect right. to see with Hawkeye. And then uh, I also want to say that that you know we're starving for content. We're used to seeing like movies come out every month and stuff like that. And then the world has has had to change. So you know now we're seeing uh, different companies utilizing streaming services. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think the Hawkeye series is gonna blow people away. Personally, just knowing the content they're drawing from, I can't be more excited. I'm gonna talk about one last book. It's not a mystery. We've talked about it on the show before. Um, this is a Phil Noto um, one in twenty five from issue number two from all new Hawkeye. So it's the next series. Um, but this, you know, Noto is almost like the modern sort of Norman Rockwell to me. Um, but um, big big fan of this cover. Um, it, it's subtle, but it's classy. You got Kate there um, rocking the vans with her bow and uh, mm -hmm. you know, Hawkeye having a big gulp. Um, just another <laughs> book that I absolutely love. And um, I love the sign. The sign is what makes it. Heroes yeah, for Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So brilliant. Hey, Ben, one more thing about um, Kate Bishop. Um, do, any idea what her first variant is? Whew, her first variant. Let me think through that for a second. First variant where she's featured on the cover, I'm sure you're asking, right? Right. Yeah, so so she was in Young Avengers. You had that entire run um, with nothing, right? Unless you want to talk about, like, you know, she wasn't even on it. So nope. and we went into Civil War. Man, we got to go a ways out. It's a good question, Carter. I don't. Okay, now, okay, now I came across a book uh, a few weeks ago, um, Avengers Prime number one. I believe it's a one in twenty-five. I, I can't find the book on me, but uh, here's the actual image, and I'm pretty sure it's probably washed out. Oh yeah, yeah. This is um Dejervic. Yeah, the yeah, and there she is. Ah, uh, where is she? She's she over here. Yeah. She yeah. So, um, I and this is from 2010, and she made her debut in what 2005. So, six, yeah, five, six, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. It's tough. It's tough to say, it, but this is like the earliest that I've found. Well, so th she's on that cover of. It's a Captain America book. Yeah, isn't it like the 25 second printing, and that's the first cover of her and Clint together? Yes, yes. And that's not the original cover when right. they're shown together. It was a Michael Turner cover. Um, I know that one, I think, predates what you just showed, Carter, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's not an expensive book, but it's rising. Um, it's absolutely rising, something to, something to consider. Um yeah, you know, we should get the answer to that. I don't know what that is right off the top of my head. Um, well, I know, I know these two aren't, but um, I've I've had these two teed up. Um, and and Ben, you just talked about Phil Noto. Here's another um, Phil Noto uh, variant. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, this was the Women of Power uh, month. Um, now I remember seeing this one. Now the qualifier on this book on this variant was uh, it meet or exceed 90% of orders for all new Hawkeye number three with orders for all nine, all new Hawkeye number five. And this was order all you want. Now it's interesting. They did two qualifier variants with two different qualifiers um, in this for the same book. So this one I feel is more common and it's a 90% it's qualifier based on Hawkeye 3. Remember that. And then for the same month, same issue, there was this book, which was a 100% wow. a qualifier based on orders for all new Hawkeye number four, a different issue. And I don't remember seeing this one around uh, back when it came out. So yeah, that was a lot tougher, Steve. That I mean, yeah. I wanted that one. That's a much, much tougher book. Yeah, I mean, it's funny the difference between ninety and a hundred percent, and I guess maybe issue three versus issue four. Um, you know, really did it. I, I guess a ninety percent qualifier is like, yeah, I mean, is 
is easier to reach than than 100. percent Yeah, but you have to think about that for a second, though. 90 percent qualifier. If they buy everything they bought, right? There's 10 percent of the qualifier out there. That's pretty rare by all accounts, right? right. So, um, you know, people weren't reaching for those sort of you know, later in the run books. Um, right. I think they're super smart plays. Yeah. So, uh, you know, keep your eyes out there, folks. I mean, and I think also what the, I, you know, everyone talks about the fraction run, but no one talks about the Lemire run. And to be honest, I've read the fraction run. I haven't read the Lemire run. I have to assume, even though I'm a big Jeff Lemire fan, um, it's just not quite as good. I, I don't know if anyone's read both. No, the Lemire run is also very good. It's just, right? I, I think, I, I think the fraction run was so cutting edge at the time. It's tough right. to live up to. It may, it may match it or even exceed it. To be honest with you, but really, when when you set a bar like that, I mean, it's it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty defining. And you know, that's what they're basing the entire TV show around is that fraction run. So I think those books are going to be massively sought after here. Come next December and January, I'd be grabbing them right now. Good point. Good point. You know, uh, um, yeah, please. I don't know if you guys heard. Uh, there was a new casting. I think. Uh, I think it was Captain Marvel two. Zal Ashton. Oh right. And uh, so we were talking about it in hangouts, me and Ben, and I don't know a few other people. And then um, we. I mean, I thought it was Moonstone. I mean, I think even Ben saw saw the uh you know the actuality of that actually happened and then um i think there was uh, an alert or an update on uh, uh one of the other sites or apps and it ended up uh, being the scroll queen uh what was her name uh varenka varenka the scroll the scroll queen the queen uh, and avengers uh, 40 i think something like that right? new avengers 40 yeah 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 and i thought it was interesting that uh it was that book because uh the second print i i used to hunt those second prints but I never could ever find them. And then all of a sudden when the update happened, Nico came in and he mentioned that, Hey, remember I mentioned this book a month or two ago and it, you know, it jarred on my memory. It went online and boom, I got two of these babies for, for uh, 20 bucks. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I could never ever find this. I mean, I have spent probably a collectively like four, I mean, they're not here yet. They're on their way. Four hours of total time looking for this book spread over however long. And then as soon as uh, Sleepy or Nico, whoever it was that mentioned that Nico was was telling us, you know, or reminding us or what have you about the book, I, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to find it. I go right on to Google and boom, there they are, 20 bucks. I'm like, oh, my God. Wow. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. And that was on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> of all places. But, yeah, I mean, um, what – what do you guys think of that? I mean, the, the possibility of her being the scroll queen for Captain Marvel too, and that, and also what, I mean, what is your guys' opinions of of Varenka the scroll queen being the main uh, adversary in Captain Marvel two over likes of Rogue or Moonstone? Uh, I mean, a lot of these casting rumors that get broken, right, are the main villain or the main this. Sometimes they end up being supporting characters, so yeah, it's it's hard to say. It's it's hard to speculate on. I mean, the scrolls are obviously super central to the Captain Marvel storyline, right? I mean, they're introduced right. there, so um, I could certainly see that character showing up. Is it the main villain? Is there somebody else in the picture? Who the heck knows? Yeah, um, that's but, how I feel uh, too. Um, but um, I could certainly see the character showing up, absolutely. Um, Marvel plays the stuff so close to the vest, um, you know, so who really, who really knows at the end of the day? I, I, I remember uh, back in the day when um, Batroc was, uh, was supposed Sleeper. to be the character in, the, uh, in, the, in that sequel, and he was he basically was in, uh, there for two minutes. Yeah, Batroc was Soldier. in the Winter right. Soldier yep. for, yeah, like, a couple minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was on the ship, and that was it, right? Yes. I mean, the captain yeah. caught him, and that was the end of it, more or less. So you never know. And I think sometimes uh, these these rumors get jumbled too. Um, right. I'm trying I'm trying to remember an example, but I, I could just see, you know, maybe you know she's not the villain for Captain Marvel two, 
but maybe she's you know a big player you know in secret invasion and i i, I just feel like sometimes there's some uh tra uh the, people transpose um because you're hearing rumors and snippets of things and you know um yeah you're right yeah i think it's right she may be maybe she has a small role in captain marvel Right, a bigger role than Secret of Asian, right? Yep. So that's that's totally possible. So yeah, you know, maybe I, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ben. My bad. No, I was just gonna say, be careful specking on characters like this, right? Um, you know, when we want to put big money behind books, you want to put big money behind characters who are going to be central to the MCU for a long time, right? So we we spent a lot of time on Kate Bishop. Um, I think most of us here would agree Kate, Kate Bishop is going to be. Um, an A-level character in the MCU for a long time. Scroll Queen, probably harder to make that argument for. So just, just be thoughtful about where you want to put your money. There can be quick flips to be had, and by all means do that. Uh, but you, you just be thoughtful about the kind of money you put down and what you're expecting long-term for some of these characters. You really want to put your big money behind characters who are going to be central to what they're doing for a long period of time, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, just remember, um, yeah, I mean, an example of that is, the, you know, Talos. Talos, who seems like, you know, he, he <laughs> will play a good part uh, uh, going forward. Um, but still, you know, like, you know, like that 418, 419, you know, was hot for a little bit. And now, you know, now you can't give it away. But, and, and you know, as I, you know, famously say um you know you know the spec doesn't die just rest i think that's one where we could see it come back because I, I don't think they're done with uh talos uh um by any means um but uh then there's the but then there's an example the, the example is um what is it favel um who was rumored to be the villain in miss marvel one right right um, captain marvel i want to say seven Six. 16. 16, 16 to 17, yeah. Yeah, 16, 17, and yeah, she was just a bit player. So, yeah, you got to well, be careful. I, I looked into the origination of this 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 oh. casting rumor, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 just uh, just a side note, I'm going to go back that that Avengers for that Avengers 40 second part that was definitely Nico spec. He definitely helped me get uh, obtain that. So thank you, Nico. But uh, yeah, I, I looked into the origination of this, and um, so apparently it came from um, uh, the Lord Lords Lords of the Long Box. So I don't know if it came from like Black Knight or Mikey Sutton or whatever, and it was immediately picked up by a few. Um, online outlets including uh we got this covered in uh another one i can't remember and then it was rehashed a couple times for about into the the summer of 2019 and then there was nothing then rogue came out remember rogue was going to be the, oh, yeah. the main oh, villain yeah. of captain marvel okay so that that became the 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 main thing and then all of a sudden boom we get this casting news recently this week and she's you know, the main villain of Captain Marvel 2. And Ben makes a great point, you know, um, things get transponded. I mean, I could see, I, I could see like a, like a, 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 an end credit cameo of sort into Secret Invasion, you know, uh, what have you, depending on what the, what the synapsis or, or goal of Captain Marvel 2 is. But um, yeah, I mean, like Ben said, uh, you want to kind of be careful in the sense of, uh, you know, speculating on something like this. Yeah, but it's always good to have your hands secure your copies. You know, you never know, just in case. Yeah, you get them so, early, happy to flip them for something bigger. But just be thoughtful when these things are starting to run like crazy. Like, how much money do I want to put into this? Where is this really going? Right. Um, um, I've always been a proponent of putting money behind characters that I think are going to be central, not only to the movies, but just culture for a long period of time, right? So, um, you know, Miles, a lot of these next generation characters, for, I think, are going to be important. Um, that's where I'm focusing. Um, everybody do their own thing, but just be just be thoughtful, particularly, you know, characters that are maybe around for one movie, right? Yeah, How, like, villains, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and then I, I want to start seeing the introductions of some of the mutants and stuff like that. You know, um, I don't know if this is a rumor or exactly who I've heard it from, 
but have you heard that like if MCU doesn't start using like some of the mutant properties that they could possibly lose it, like some of the X Men characters? I don't else? think they're going to lose them. I mean, based on yeah. the, the the deal that I read, that they, they bought that the property outright for okay. huge money from Fox. So I don't think there's any risk of that. They own that stuff outright. Okay. I think they're going to be thoughtful though about introducing mutants into the MCU, and I think they're going to do it. Um, through a number of different properties very subtly, right? So I I do think, because it makes too much sense not to, that they're going to introduce Wolverine through Captain America um, as them both being part of sort of a government weapon program. Right? Yeah. It makes too much sense. Tying Cap to Wolverine from an economic standpoint is, uh, is too smart for them, I think, not to do. And there's a lot of precedent in the comics to make that happen. Um, I don't know if the rogue rumor in Captain Marvel 2 is true or not, but I think that would be brilliant because that's where Rogue got her powers from. I think that would be really yeah. cool, right? For them to start to ease mutants in that way. Mm -hmm. um, um, but this notion that they might lose it, I I don't think that's possible. No, given the money, the billions they spent on the Fox properties, I don't think there's any risk of them losing these characters. That they're they're theirs, they own them. Um, and I think there's going to be more of a slow bleed just because of maybe potentially the bad taste left in the mouth of some viewers uh, okay. at the tail end of that X-Men franchise at Fox. Okay. There's some really sense. high moments, like some knock it out of the park moments. And then Dark Phoenix, for my money, was amongst the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to like throw shade at anybody but i just thought that was it's the truth it's yeah. the tr it's the absolute truth and i'll be honest with you i i was so excited for mutants for the uh, uh coming to the mcu and which i still am but once i watched that movie and you always got to watch things a second time right i mean right. we we all have we all have to give them that second second chance especially with this stuff i'm a huge fan of second chances and um, it just got worse. So every time I was hearing that mutants were coming to the MCU, I started like going, like I didn't care anymore. So I had to get that out of my head. But then when Pietro got introduced in WandaVision, oh man, I was pumped. Yeah. I was pumped. So technically the mutants are already here, right? Yeah. I mean, right. in the MCU. Right. Yeah. So, um, but uh, on the subject of Rogue, before we move on to the next, uh, you know, yeah, that would have been a great, a great 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 casting i hope it happens um avengers annual 10 um i think we've all agreed and talked about this if rogue was on the cover it would be a four or five hundred dollar book raw um probably a fifteen hundred dollar book the nine eight even without the development but you know she's not on the cover um but it's still a great book i have a few copies of it a lot of people aren't recognizing this book um which is actually Rogue's second appearance, and it's her first cover appearance. It's Rom 31, Rom Space Knight 31, right here. There's Rogue, right there. You see her in the green right there? Right there. Oops, <laughs> wrong one. Wrong one. <laughs> right there. You see Rogue with the, the silver stripe right there? Yeah, it's a great know. cover. It's an awesome cover. This one's a newsstand. Um, I picked up a few, and uh, they're in my long boxes, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I, I think that's a, a great point. Is is if uh, if they would have done Rogue as the main villain, I think this that movie probably, besides the Spider Man and the and the and the Thor movie, would have probably um, been the the MCU movie, so to speak. Yeah, no, Richie, um, that's a great book. And for those who watch our show, um, who watch our top ten list. Um, that book just missed the cut on our top 10 list. Um, but I think it's a really smart play. Me too. Whether or not Rogue yeah. is the villain, if you will, in Captain Marvel, or even if she makes an appearance of meaningful, of some meaningful amount, um, you know, I, I think that could really move the needle on that character. But yeah, that ROM 31 that Richie showed is a, is, is a smart play. And that, that book is not going to cost you a lot of money. You can pick Richie, up that your pick? For 15 bucks. Was that, oh, that was one of my that was one of my picks. Yeah, great right. pick, great pick. Yeah. I, I voted it high, but you know, I'm <laughs> I did it. too. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember people specking on that book like five, six years ago. I'm not quite sure why, 
But I remember mm. that and people making plays for that book. So huh. it's a it, so it, the roller coaster spec is real. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rehash. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And and um and and to, to touch on what Ben was saying about putting money behind characters that we see that have legs, so to speak, to put in mm. layman's terms, that have longevity. Um, I came across this. I don't know. I'm sure somebody else probably knows this on millions of people. But uh, when all the Wakanda news came out. Um, so my character in my head, when the Wakanda news, or if we talk Black Panther, is Shuri, right? So I think Shuri has longevity, has legs. There's a lot of good Shuri keys. There's, uh, you know, the Black Panther uh, number two and from 2005. There's the newsstand of that book. Um, there's her second appearance, which is like a 50 cent book. That's number three. And then there's uh, her as uh, Black Panther, which is um, the first cameo. It's a one panel cameo. It's in uh, Black Panther Annual. And then um, there's the Black Panther 1 and the Black Pan Panther 5 from 2009, the Dark Rain tie in, where J. Scott Campbell does all the covers. We all know those books. So now let's talk about other characters like Miles and Kamala. Well, I found this. This is Shuri number six. Okay. This is from 2018. And then you have Shuri number seven. Okay, I haven't found any variants for these. Let me show six one more time, and then, and then seven, and I believe, and 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 if and if I'm wrong, audience, please let me know. But I believe these are the first time that Shuri. I love this cover too, especially uh, mm -hmm. Shuri, Kamala, and Miles team up or meet meet up and team up. Uh, they Miles and and Shuri meet up and team up in number six but the battle um that they're they go through is with kamala and that's in number seven and it's a great cover it actually even says it on the cover um can even miles Mor uh, i'm sorry can even miss marvel and miles morales help uh shuri overcome the pull of gravitation and then on number six it, um you have wakanda goes brooklyn as shuri meets miles morales right on the bottom of the cover these books were not being heavily ordered. I mean, I believe I saw orders by retailers were really low. I think they were under, they're under 20,000 or under. I mean, so Dude, I mean, Sherry one had 35, less than 35,000 copies ordered. So Sherry was not a heavily ordered book, even yeah. on, the, even on number one, right. Which always get heavily ordered. And I like all, I mean, we, I mean, I, I think pretty much the whole panel probably thinks that, all three of those characters have some legs, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, at least for me, I, I know that I do. Um, so I think, you know, that those could be some, uh, could be an interesting play for a dollar bin book. I bet you pay less if you went to a comic book shop or something. Like that. So, yeah. Good but, stuff. Uh, Carter, did you get, you get a chance to go digging this week? Uh, sort of, kind of. I, uh, I was, in, I was in the middle of hunting and I uh, blew out a tire, oh. and I, cra I cracked a rim. <laughs> so I was grounded uh, this weekend. Hopefully, we'll get it straightened out. You know what I mean? But uh, mm -hmm. I do have a couple of books I do want to show. Now, awesome. we have, okay. Speaking of Young Avengers, nice. not this one. Oh. This is now. I found this. This was like from a month ago. I have yet to even show this off on my channel. So we have Doctor Strange. Uh, number three eighty four. Um, this is this a qualifier or just kind of an open order thing? That would be a question for Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll look it up. Let's okay. See. Doctor Strange three oh four. Uh, three eighty four. Oh, three eighty four. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Yeah, so I found this for a couple of dollars. Of uh, this was something that I was looking for probably probably for a couple of months um with it, this book is going for roughly what 25 to 30 dollars or something like that wow i'm not i'm not sure but it was a um a 100 qualifier based on uh wow of 383 so hmm. yeah so okay. that's rare nice uh, yeah, yeah so nice when a 100 qualifier for a mid-run book means that you had to buy all of what you bought for the last book. That's right. And you could buy some of these, right? Right. 
right? So people were a lot of retailers weren't sticking their neck out for these, right? I mean, they, they, they might grab one or two of them. You know, the big guys obviously more, but like your average LCS wasn't loading up on these, mm -hmm. uh, right? And speaking of Doctor Strange, we found I don't know this book was doing a little something something over the summer, not so much now, but uh, Doctor Strange three eighty two second print. Um, this was I think this was like another you know like two dollar book. Um, it's not going for anything, but this it has the century on it, and the century has a ton of potential, even though he's not being used right now. Uh, okay, now I came across this book, uh, Thunderbolts number one. What, what number is this? One forty three. Very uh, now, I, I forget if this is a Iron Man armor variant or not. But if you now, it looks hot. It looks really cool. But if you if you look a little closer, you'll see he's basically a giant pinball machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, okay, and now here's some books that I want to talk about. Oh, uh, let's talk about some Daredevil real quick, expeditiously. Uh, Man Without Fear, number two, one in twenty-five variant. I, I saw this book for a cover price over the summer, and I just figured, you know what, this is a good cover. I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and buy it, especially for cover price. And uh, let's talk about the Daredevil like second printing second and third printings so um oh, yeah, good one great yeah, i love there's some like i'm trying to collect i think maybe i have all of them i don't know i don't know i don't know like those uh subsequent prints like um this this cover here the second print um this is such a great first off the daredevil is such a great series you know the chips Zdarsky. Is, one of the uh, best. I mean, and I say this about every Daredevil run, but this is like one of the best runs for Daredevil ever. Yeah, I there's like a, I say that every freaking run, but like, uh huh. It's there's really a video out there about. I have yet to watch it, but I'm looking forward to watching it about uh, the one character that Marvel always gets right, and <laughs> they're referring to Daredevil. So I can't wait to watch that video. Um, number, uh, or rather, number one third print. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, number four. I love this cover. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a good one, Carter. Yeah, I love that one too. Number four, second print. Now the first print is like it, like around a twenty-five dollar book. Like it's a, it's an all black cover. Um, it has kind of like that mashup of um Daredevil and the Punisher, and um, it's it's a, like I said, all black. It's going for about twenty twenty-five dollars, and uh, this book is relatively tough to find oh now this book was real hard to find uh, another good one daredevil number five second print nice and Dude, you know the funny thing is, is i i'm a daredevil reader yeah i don't really spec on them i have all of these right <laughs> i had no idea they were going for this much like literally i had no idea yeah. that's crazy and now this one isn't going for anything at all, but uh, Daredevil number 10, second print uh, with Electro on the cover. And now, and this was, a, and this is a completely, I, I know uh, number, I think number eight and number seven are basically just very slight, or just slight variations of uh, the first print, but these here that I'm talking about are completely different covers. And uh, this one is a completely different cover as well than number 10. I'm surprised this one doesn't go for anything just because. It's a, it's you, know, a, you know why it doesn't? Because hmm. I've got like five of these. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so we talked about Daredevil. And here's a, one more book that I want to show. Um, Monsters Unleashed number one. I forget which volume this is. Because they uh, put out Monsters Unleashed, like two different volumes in the same year. So, uh, so if you look up Monsters Unleashed 2017, you'll get the you'll get like two different volumes. So I forget which volume this is, but you have uh, Kid Kaiju and Elsa Bloodstone, right smack dab on the cover. 
You love it. Nice. Yeah. That, that, that was the first one. I, so I grabbed the Monsters Unleashed. Uh -huh. today. All right. So I found this. This is a one in twenty-five. It says nine ninety-nine, but I got it for five dollars. Yep. Uh, Ji Hung Lee, who is one of my favorite artists today. Um, so I snagged this one today, which yes, I, sir. I was all, pretty happy with myself. All of those covers, those uh, those Lee covers are awesome, amazing. I'm trying to collect. I think I'm one comic short of that uh, of that connecting comic run, connecting cover run. I'm still looking for that ghost. Ghost Spider one in one hundred, like that's still been on my list, like since release day, and like. No, I dude, I, so yeah. let me tell you a quick story about that one. I got it. Um, I hunted it forever. I won that in an auction for two hundred and twenty-five dollars, raw graded. It came back nine eight, but on top of that, it came with a second book, which I didn't even realize was part of the auction, which is probably worth fifty or sixty bucks. The best <laughs> auction I've ever won, and this was. A year and a half ago now, maybe oh, two yeah. years ago now. I've lost track of time, but um, yeah. In that, so I t we talk about modern classic covers, the Hawkeye Nine, that yeah. number one by Ji Hung Lee for me, top ten modern covers, easy, yeah. easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, thank God, we're gonna get pissed people off. I think Zdarsky is angling to bring Vigil back. In my opinion, in some weird way, I thought that that story with the, the Daredevil annual, where Mike Murdoch sort of gets formally created, was sort of heading down that road to somehow create Vigil to come back into that storyline. Whether Vigil is, um, you know, whether whether it's Mike Murdoch who looks just like Matt Murdoch who ended up being Vigil, but it, it just felt like. He was trying to reintroduce that character, um, but who the hell knows? We'll see. That's just. But I, I've loved that run. I want to share one last book. This is a one in twenty-five. I may have talked about it before, but I, you know, given how hot Wanda is, um, I think this book is an absolute banger, right? So these Ultron for, Forever variants were were done um, to look like. Um, the MCU characters. So there's a Chris Evans one, um, Quicksilver, Hulk, Hawkeye, uh, a number of them. But, um, you know, these are, and my battery is about to go, so you might lose me here. But I, I think these are really smart pickups, particularly as sort of this uh, trend of getting uh, actors to autograph books grows. I'd be grabbing books like this, and I absolutely love this one. I think it's stunning. Um, because I think Wanda kicks ass. It's really uh, interesting because, uh, you know, Daredevil's so against guns, right? So, you know, when they're battling inside, I won't spoil it for everybody. When they're battling inside, you find out a little bit of uh, origin of, you know, why he's so against guns, so to speak. That, um, to add on to it, I think this is with the, with the casting of the possible Scroll Queen coming. I think this is a good play. I actually used to hate this cover, but now I'm starting, I'm starting to see that the, if this ends up being um, the way that the MCU goes with scrolls, um, with Secret Invasion, and uh, you know, um, and, and Talos and what have you, I think this is uh, a decent play. Is the those scroll covers? This is actually Electra as the, as the Scroll Queen right here, and this is uh, number one. It's I believe it was open order, so I don't know how many are out there. There might be a lot. There might not be. Um, I just don't see a lot of retailers ordering scroll covers. You know what I mean? Um, at that time in 2019. So, or yeah, 2019. So I don't really think this one is that common, but it could be. Um, I uh, Phil dropped the link and I ended up getting a couple of these around at FOC or maybe it was even a week after. I, I can't remember with those one in tens for uh, Gwynnum and Carnage. I don't really particularly uh, it's not one of my favorites. I, I don't dislike it. I love the cover, uh, but it's just not one of my. I just don't like this. That I don't know. It's just I don't know. It just reminds me of when I'm sick with the flu and I throw up. Like, kinda, <laughs> but I, but but I, I'm not saying that the cover is like puke. I'm just saying just that color. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I got a couple of those. Um, let's see. I these weren't pickups, but I found them in my long boxes, and I and uh, there's. It, 
this is a good time, I guess, to bring them up. But this is actually uh, Fantastic Four 352, right? And um, now we all know the first full appearance of Mr. Mobius, who's casted and confirmed for the Loki series and is being played by Owen Wilson. Um, well, that is Mr. Mobius. His first full appearance is in Fantastic Four 353. If you get the direct edition, um, you know, right here, the generic kind of picture of either like a Spider-Man or, you know, and this particular one's Dr. Doom or what have you. Well, it actually has Mr. Mobius in it. And a lot of people are gravitating towards characters on the cover. It's interesting that it's there. But I prefer the newsstands, to be honest with, with you, because they're, they're a lot rare. But this is actually his first cameo appearance, Mr. Mobius, right here. And he's actually shown in full. But the thing is, is that he's kind of real small. So I, I thought this was interesting. I found a few of these in my long box. They're 50 cents. But if Mobius... And Owen Wilson take off, you know, you might want to probably grab the set 352, 353. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys this one. Did, did I show you this uh, first yeah. appearance of Norman Osborn? Yeah, I thought this was uh, yeah. got a really sweet deal on this. And um, it's in real, it's in really good shape for the year and how popular this book was at one time when the Tobey Maguire movies were out. Um, I mean, I bet you I'd probably get a 7 0 with this. And then, um, did I show you this guy's this one, the first Ultron? Oh, cool. uh, Avengers 55. Nice. This was a birthday present from my family. Um, yeah, I, it's crazy because they, they got this at a, at a 4 0 price. And after I inspected it, I don't know how, unless there's, I, and I looked for restoration, there's nothing. Unless there's some restoration I don't know about, I don't see how this doesn't get at least an 8 5 or higher. And the staples are attached. I mean, it's beautiful. The pages are white. I think it's gorgeous. Um, let's see. Uh, Midtown had these in stock, and I couldn't believe it. They had them marked as fine with the Secret Invasion 1s. Now, we know that the Secret Invasion 1 was printed, what, 250, 300,000 copies. <laughs> and I think this is either the 1 in 75 or the 1 in 25, McDevitt. It might be the 1 in 25. It's probably the 1 in 25. So it's not that rare. And there's not really a play on the Secret Invasions, in my mind, unless you get the incentives. And they were fine. So they were only like $3.28. So I got a couple of them, you know, no big deal. They had like a 30% off sale. Um, I never read the story, so I'm probably going to get into that. I've been reading a lot lately. As you guys could probably tell in the Hangouts. <laughs> um, and then um, I ended up uh, getting these from uh, my comic shop. Shout out to them because they put up with me. And I really appreciate it. I'm not the easiest to put up with. But uh, this is the Werewolf by Night. But this is actually number four, and it's an open order variant. And I yeah. cannot believe this was open to order. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm almost wondering, did, were they planning on making this an incentive and decided, you know what I mean? Like you, you Sometimes know, they just, do that. They do. They yeah. just did that with yeah. – um, uh, what the man thing webhead cover? It was yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I've heard that. I've I've heard that. I didn't know. I've never confirmed. But if Steve says it, it's pretty much true. So <laughs> um, and then uh, he's never stirred me wrong. Put it that way. Um, I got these from unknown. Uh, I never showed them, but I got them uh, in 2019. I right when they dropped, they were I think they were like 15 or 20 bucks. This was um, War of Realms, New Agents of Atlas, um, and uh, number one. I, I believe this is the second print. Let me, I have to double check that. But it's a, it's the version of Wave, right? So yeah. when Kevin, and you guys have heard me for the last, what, seven months we've been together as a team spouting out about New Agents of Atlas and Swordmaster and all that. And you, and it's no secret. It's not like I started that spec. I mean, every, I, mean the, I feel like this, I think between you exactly. and Phil from, from Vintage Toys, I mean, yeah. you both have been banging the drum. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to say that the, I should get credit or nothing. I not yeah. even close. So, I mean, it may, it's probably rehashed, but I mean, I, I was pretty lucky to get some of these and then yeah. I just saw some recent sales for a couple of raw ones for 75 bucks. So that, really? that was pretty cool. Is that yeah. a Victorian cover? Um, yes, it is. It's the Virgin, uh, but it's the unknown where it has the black and white on the back. It's not the um, Comic Odyssey one, which I wish it was. I mean, those things were like fifteen hundred dollars. Um, let's see here. I, I I don't know if you guys know, but this came out this week. The Star Wars Insider yep. magazine 
And oh. um, I know that most or a lot of people are, I don't know, maybe burned out for lack of a better term on Momoko covers, but um, I'm not, I, I like her. I think she's one of the best cover artists. I really like her style. She's doing panels, interior work and creating a story for an X-Men title that was on FOC last week. And um, it, you know, I'm excited for it, but she actually did this magazine cover and there's a variant, there's a cover A, and I believe this is the collector's edition or what have you. And I think this is one of her best covers. I mean, it's, it doesn't really have the Momoko kind of right. swirling. You know what right. I mean? It's, yep. it's just straight to the point, and it looks like she really put her best into it. You know, and you got the Mandalorian, you got the the child. Uh, Go, what is the name? Gokor? Or I, I uh, forgot his name. Prop, prop. Yeah, I, call, yeah. I call him the asset. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, there's also a preview story in here from Charles Soul. So, you know, if that if that story ends up getting, uh, you know, developed, who knows where this thing could go? You know, I don't know how many is out there. I'm not even going to pretend. Could be millions and I could be just, you know, drunk. But um, I thought it was a cool pickup. It's only 10 bucks. And then... Um, that was a PX Previews exclusive. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That was the the PX Diamond. Ex whatever, yeah. P um, well, yes. I, yeah, I believe it, it was because the... The other one is a really cool cover too. It's a sick cover of the Mandalorian, mm -hmm. which I, I was in the shop and everybody said, "Oh, look at that cover of Boba! Look at that color of Boba!" I was like, "No, that's not Boba. That's the Mandalorian." <laughs> but anyways, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's cool. You got the uh, Mandalorian is so hot. And then I, I bought these. Uh, shout out to Comics, Tunes, and Toys, and Tustin, uh, the big to do Mike. He every time I'm there, he, when he's there, he takes care of me. Um, when I first met the guy. Uh, quick side note, Thor 5 was just, it was like three days old and it was going crazy. And it had to hit like 35 bucks. It was on the hot 10 list or what have you. You know, I think 30 bucks. When I first met him as like a partying gift, he gave me a for free a near mint copy. And, um, you know, it got up to whatever amount. But to this day, even though I flipped all those uh, copies I got on New Comic Book Day and pre-ordered, I kept his. So that's the one I'm going to send to Z CGC. But yeah, I got these at his shop. Comics, Tunes, and Toys. This is a uh, Avengers 260. This is your first, and she gets no love, but this is your first cover appearance of Nebula. And you can see Nebula here. You see the orange right. the face right here? So I guess they're calling that her first cover appearance. I don't know, but I thought it was cool. I think it's a cool cover. Yeah. Um, I, think it's, I think it's interesting Nebula gets no love when, first of all, um, you know, she's been in so many movies and she's been a prime character in each movie. And uh, Karen Gilliam, uh, Karen Gilliam is one of my favorite actors. She's not only brilliant and great at what she does and, and, and beautiful, but uh, she brings a Nebula character out so well. And Nebula, Nebula is um, confirmed. She's doing the vo voice, vo uh, voiceover in What If... I think it's episode either 1.1 or 1.4. I think it might be 1.4. I got to double check that. It's actually in the fandom. It's already submitted in there. And then uh, she's confirmed for Thor 4. We saw, I mean, we saw recent leaks. And then um, she's also Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And then um, there's still rehashed rumors of her and Gamora doing um, uh, a Disney Plus series. So if that ends up happening, how the heck is her first appearance which i just got another copy but i can't find it of avengers 257 still like a, a 20 to 50 dollar book you know it's crazy to me so you know i in, in case that book takes off i just grabbed a few of those um and oh, and also on, uh, to all those doctor who fans she's probably one of the best companions so oh I, that's true yeah yep. that's true <laughs> good point found this digging carter you'd appreciate this yeah, that's a uh, see the press thing. I yeah, I remember that over the like man over the past few years, like that being hot, being like a hot book. Yeah, so yeah, four bucks is I would have been all over that. Yeah. So um, and then uh, let's see, I got this one. The you know the first. Oh, print. that's always a good pickup. Always oh yeah, a good pickup. 
I think me and Steve are the only DC. Steve is in is the actual DC. <laughs> I'm just I'm really into DC. Too. I, I picked up a lot of copies of that in the past couple of months, and I'm surprised how quickly they sell for good money. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, I got a few other things. No big deal. Uh, oh, uh, Key Alert put out the Doctor Strange uh, new. Um, possible villain or what have you on his spec deck. Uh, shout out to Nick. Um, and uh, I, it, it's funny. As soon as it updated, um, I was digging. And as soon as it updated, I got a text from a friend, and he's like, "Oh, did you hear about that?" And I looked at the picture. I was literally looking in the Deadpool box, and these were right next to it. <laughs> and then boom, one was two bucks, one was four bucks. Um, and then you know, um, I mean, pretty much. Uh, just, you know, normal stuff. I, I mean, new comic day. Uh, this was one of the best new comic book days. Taskmaster 3 cover A. Um, I got a couple of the 1 in 25s that were pre-ordered. Those are in the mail. And then I got one from uh, my comic shop. The Thunderbolts, I don't know a lot of people that have been reading it. It's actually a really good. It's like the Taskmaster series a little bit, but more Thunderbolty. Um, there's a panel I want to show in here. He was talking about Century, right? So... Century. I have two copies of the San Diego Comic Con uh, uh, with the COA. I have two of those yes. for Century One, and I have been praying for Century to be developed. But then I saw the uh, then I saw the panel right here, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what is happening with Century? Why are they doing this? And there's uh, and this is I don't know if this is a spoiler alert or not, but uh, if you haven't read this, you're planning on uh, turn your head away. But anyways, the, the okay. Thunderbolts, who are uh, the new team, is consists of Star and Taskmaster and a few others. There's towards the end of the book, they're basically uh, they're going on their mission and they find a corpse right here, and it's Sentry, right? And it's just half of his body, okay? And they're asking, you know, who is this guy and, and, and what happened to him? And they're like, that's the century. And, and Taskmaster, Tony Masters says, or, or they ask, why is only half his body there? And Taskmaster says, because Noel ripped him in half. <laughs> 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 and, uh, he done him dirty, baby. He done him dirty. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, um, the, but the, the, net, the preview for the next issue, it has this big kind of like a, a mushroom cloud. And it has the century logo on it. Hmm. So maybe they're gonna bring them, figure out a way to bring them back on the next next issue. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's it. We're good. Good stuff. Cool. Steve, did you have any books you wanted to share? I have some. Um, so this first one is, um, yeah, it, when, when you're looking at our our uh, top ten list, I mean every single uh, every week we have twenty to twenty five books and. And every single one of them is is a great pick, and it is it is very yeah, hard yeah. to rank them from one to twenty or one to twenty five, and yeah. and I I can't even remember who to give credit to for this one. Maybe one of you other guys do, but uh, and I think it was the one in twenty five variant. But you know, um, I think there what there's a female Deathlock. Uh, no, you're talking about. Um... <laughs> Oh, I'm talking oh, about Arena, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was Carter. Uh, Arena was so, Carter's pick. Yeah, yeah, that was Carter's pick. Yeah, Carter, Carter's pick. But so this isn't even the book that Carter picked. But still, Carter's pick was great. I, I did look for it. I, I didn't find <laughs> it, but I did find this, and this has some first appearances. So hey, it was a cheap oh. pickup. Nice, um, dude. Yeah, astonishing X Men. I know there's been talk about uh, this. Is that uh, 10? Um, yeah, that's, that's the first yeah. official uh, uh, team appearance of Sword, right? Yeah, you know, the Sword gets tossed around, what, 3, 6, uh, and 10, right? So um, I'm, I'm covering all my bets. <laughs> wow. Yeah. On um, this, you know, I, you know, we talked, you know, the, uh, some of our other guys have um, thrown the spotlight on Second Prince. And the qualifiers, um, you know, I, I like the must-haves. So the must-haves are reprints. Uh, there's one for uh, 
uh, Nikes or what do you how do you pronounce it? Uh, N NYX, you know, three through yeah. five. Um, here's another one. I mean, this is Red Hulk, Hulk one through three. Um, I've never seen that book before ever. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't see them because you know I'm sure retailers looked at them and were like, you know, first of all they they they're thick. So actually, I'll open it up. I'll tell you what the cover price was. So this was a four ninety nine cover price, probably back when books were two ninety nine. Yeah, two ninety nine. Right. So between the high price and then you know, um, you know who's gonna pick up, you know, reprint. Yeah, I think the must-haves are, uh, you know, ha haven't quite had their hockey stick moment yet that the second prints and some other things have had. No, I, I agree with that. I have a, uh, I have a, it's funny you bring that up. Um, I have a must-haves uh, NYX3, Nix3. <laughs> it's yeah. 9 four, though. It's 9 four. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I, 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 I love those. Um nine. Uh, picked up another copy of this. You know, um, second you know, right when the Moon Girl news uh, hit. You know, the one thing that's nice that well, I checked the prices on these recently. I remember when I picked up a couple copies of this before. The second print was um, selling for more than the first print, but now that the news has hit, looking at the past week or two of sales and and the asking prices. Uh, it looks like people actually do want the first print that has Princess Fisk and Wilson Fisk, you know, um, large, you know, front and center on the cover. Um, but still, I mean, I think uh, th this is also a good bet. Um, this, a uh, Marvel Voices, this, this is like a COVID book, you know, came out around March. Yeah. This is one of the variant covers. This is the barber shop cover. Um, I think this could get some some heat. Um, nice. And um, I think um, one of the reasons is, uh, and this will be something people will be arguing about in about a month. Uh, Children of the Atom number one uh, is, I think, on FOC. Yeah. Um, I think this week or next, and. Supposedly, the they are arguably. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to avoid it. They have a cameo in here. All right. Okay. Um, Can you repeat the title of that book? One more it's time. Marvel Voices. So they've been putting out these voices books, right? Uh, for the past year, this is the first one. It's not the. Um, uh, there's been a couple that like. There's Voices Legacy. There's Voices. Uh, indigenous, uh, right? right? Th this is just plain Marvel's voices. Um, so, is there a cover for? Because that's issue four, right? No, there was only one one issue. Okay, oh, so it's a one shot, but, right? But there were two variants, and then there was a what they call not a second printing, but a new uh, printing. So, is um, there a cover? Is there a cover of of that issue with the Children of Adam? No. Okay. No, 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 no covers. Okay. Um, and as far as credit for that, I do want to give credit um, to um, Comics Heating Up and uh, our friend uh, Anthony Hammock, Tony Hammock. Good man. Um, I know there's been a, a thread on uh, his forums about uh, that book and Children of the Atom. So credit where, where credit's due. Um, <laughs> It, and it's kind of interesting. It, it was weird because this book came out in March, and then they did a new printing of it. Remember, new printing, not a second printing. Really strange. Um, yeah. in, in November, um, and that has a close up of Miles um, on the uh, of, of one of his eyes. Um, Have you ever seen that before? New printing rather than a late printing. I feel like I have. Um, but what I can't, recall. I don't think it's that fre frequently. And I've I, never seen that before. That's yeah. Cool. Um, I think, did we already, I think I already talked about this one. Oh, you before. lucky yeah. dog. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, secret empire, brave new world Two. 
Um, you know, I think Mr. Long Shorts got us all on the Gwen Pool train. Yeah. Whether we want to be on it or not, the the pool is undeniable. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, oh, that's a pretty cool cover too. Show. So even though it's a regular cover, um, it's not exactly plentiful. Yeah. Um, grab these as soon as Wakanda was announced. Gorgeous. I mean, what else says Wakanda other than, I mean, besides it being a hip hop cover. You know, this is a, a great cityscape. Yeah, you know? yeah, it is. So, great. Um, you know, can't go. You know, uh, again, um, our, our our friends, um, uh, you know, have have, dra have dragged us um, <laughs> into the action figure. <laughs> you know, probably rightly so. Rightly so. Um, uh, this was my pick a couple weeks ago. And it was a DC book that actually made the top ten, so I mm. continue to pick up <laughs> copies. What, which that title is that, Steve? I, That's I Young Justice number one. That's right. Um, and where Teen Lantern is featured. I want that cover so bad. Love it. Yeah. Um, I think all of us have picked up some of these. Uh, someone on uh, eBay somehow grabbed yeah. a bunch of uh, Spider Gwen. Uh, I think this is issue five. And it was a convention exclusive. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, th this guy on eBay has like, like, I don't know, 50, 100, 150 copies. Jeez. And, um, Did you get the interesting shipping too? Where was it? Yeah. Two, matter two, of fact, two, two pieces of, uh, yeah. I'll pull this out of the garbage. Um, this was really, you know, unique. I mean, ideally, you know, all. Well, see, my books were shipped in the bag and board. Oh, okay. Um, but I know Lucky. some people just received them in a pane of – this is really thick. It's not glass. It's plastic. But, it's, I mean, it's really thick. Lots yeah. of glass and, and two panes. So the books were in between those, I, you know. And then was it saran wrapped for you too? Yeah, and it was saran wrapped. Yeah. Um, which, you know, if it's bagged and boarded is great. I mean, from as a seller myself, I mean, I know this this will kill your shipping costs, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, you'll, you, you're going to have to send that puppy priority. But OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I ordered one copy and it wasn't bagged and board. But, okay. it, it, but it was in that plastic. It's probably the most unique way I've ever so it's in yeah. my top three ways of being shipped. So yeah, I mean, we've all ordered books of, off eBay, and yeah, we've seen some unique ways. That's probably the the most unique, um, and I, I'd say good. Unfortunately, your yours, Aaron, wasn't bagged and boarded. That's that's crappy. Um, but yeah. uh, Ultimates two second printing. Got that one. Let me see if I have anything else to share. Um, oh yeah, let me, um, so going along with Young Justice, there's the second print, the red background. Nice. Here was a fail where I ordered this from retailer, but it was so cheap, I'm not going to return it. But suppose uh, there is a second print to Starfire number one, and they thought they were sending me the second print. They sent me the first print. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you know, between Starfire, Cyborg, and Beast Boy, um, yeah, maybe someday, you know, yeah. DC gets his act together. Going back to Voices, this is one of the variant covers. Um, open order, um, both both the uh, and I, I, you know, I like this. I, I think this is pretty pretty darn sweet. Um, so that was the original March, I want to say March printing, the variant cover. Nice. Uh, let me see if I can just really quickly, if I have um, a, in my boxes, I wanted to see if I could find a, another one to show you since we're talking about the voices, but um, I don't know. I, I can't, uh, I can't find one right now. So um, but th those are those are my pickups and my uh, beautiful tips. Thank you. Gorgeous. All right. 
so I only have a few. Uh, I actually got to go shopping at a store today. Uh, right before, yeah, I yeah, know I got lucky. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so oh, busy, easy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a Nova number one. Sick. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm sure we'll start to hear more news and stuff like that. With you know, now Sam that's Sam Alexander. Yeah, I yeah I think this is. I love it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, especially with uh, you know, uh, Ultra's uh, spec matrixes. I've been chasing after all the second prints, uh, yeah. non lenticular covers. I mean, I already had a few, so like, if I keep on finding them for like three or four bucks, like I'm yeah. gonna pick them up. Yeah. So I mean, like, I'll tr I'll try to avoid eBay as much as possible, but I mean, like, without convention seasons and stuff like that, but. The shops I've been picking up at, they like they have them for four bucks because like they use Overstreet to price, and I'm not mm -hmm. complaining. Uh, I got I one of those second... uh, over here, Aaron. The uh, the guy uses Overstreet for everything. He doesn't even have a computer. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I found the Edge of Spider Verse number two second print, or not second number two, but Edge of Spider Verse number four second print. Second so, print, nice. Yeah. Um, I found this. Uh, X Force One crane cover. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, a lot of the covers in that that X Force run are really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I, I think I think Crane did quite a bit for those. Yeah, oh, he, yeah. he he is so he's talented, so undervalued too. I mean, he is he's so underrated that guy. Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I totally see him finally just becoming the guy. You know. Yeah, yeah. And then. I picked up a Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur issue number seven. Nice. Is there yeah. a first appearance in that one or no? Uh, I think there there is because uh, okay. you know I caught it's drunken chat the other day. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what he said, what Mel was saying, but uh, you know number one went on the top ten, so I was like, and then he mentioned like all the like issues, like hey, you should be looking out for the this one, this one, this one, and I just happened to be listening. And I was like, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, Mel knows Moon Girl and the Double Dinosaur. I, I met Mel what three, four years ago from um, Drunken Chat, and uh, you know, just just from the live chat or whatever. And he recognized my name and hey, say what's up yeah, uh, yeah. On, on Unpressable Defects. And uh, I mean, he's been talking about that so since the beginning of 2018. So what three, three, four years almost? Sure. Yeah, yeah, Good and. Pick. I can't find an issue one now, so like that's what's killing me. I've been like you know searching and searching, but you know it, I'll find it one day. You'll find it. Yeah, and then uh, I picked up the Star Wars Star Vader, uh, twenty five. Oh, I think wow. it's a I think it's an incentive variant. If if I'm not mistaken, is that right? I'm Somebody sure. had that on the list, and and like Steve said, um, it is. I'll yeah. be honest, with you, I dread picking. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it's so hard. I don't know about like, you guys, but I dread it because it's yeah. like the books are so good and it's like you know it's how do you read them? Yeah, it's, it's Anyways, like how do you, book, I thought that book was on the list, was it? Wasn't that um it, it, I think well it was the Del Auto. Um so right. this was in Andy's pick. Uh, yeah, but this isn't the Del Auto cover. Right. Mm -hmm. That's no that that it that isn't. Um but but still, um, what Andy said about it is still true and still makes that valuable um, because, I mean, yeah, part part of his um, case obviously is Del Auto, but um, he had a, a, a some great insight that this is the big reveal that Palpatine is uh, Vader's father, creator, and it's also a key uh, Ahsoka uh, appearance. So oh, wow. okay. yeah, so twenty five yeah. is a good book. Yeah, so I'm not complaining for six dollars, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then every time I see a screaming sido, uh, I'll pick it up. Nice. Yeah, Connor, that's your that's one of your picks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm proud of that. And then, of course, if I'm going to pick it, you know, I might as well pick it up. So I actually found one today for four dollars. It was a good yeah. pick. Yeah. Thank you. Buy as many as you can. Right. <laughs> All, All right. right. Good job. Hey, yeah. And. and just to let everybody know, um, Aaron was acquired um, from the New York Yankees, and uh, 
I'm very glad that he's on our team now. Thank you. Thank you for everyone for tuning in. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel.